All right, so in this video, we're going to be hopping back in Blender with the high poly sculpt that we did last time in ZBrush. And we're going to, I'm going to go over my retopple process briefly and talk about splitting your mesh up and getting ready for baking uh, and making sure you name it, are naming it right. And uh, talking about, we'll go over, excuse me, uh, exporting your mesh and getting it uh, into the, your next bake program. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Here we are in Blender and we have the high poly sculpt that we did in ZBrush. Um, for the retopo, I just am using the base mesh from my uh, original block out. And I'm just gonna kinda tweak it to make the silhouette get as close to each plank. Um, it had been a while since I had done this, so I was kind of like figuring, refiguring out how to do it, and it took a little while. Um, this is a super simple uh, object to retopo. It's basically a bunch of boxes, so it's it was a, a good choice for uh, somebody who's rusty. But anyways, I hid the rest of the mesh and just kept the retopo mesh and the high poly for this plank, and I give it a generous amount of topology because I really want to exaggerate the features, um, and I might animate the crate so that it like, can like fall apart and be uh, destroyed down the line. But uh, that's something I'll have to get to later. Uh, here I am. Yeah, I'm just tweaking, moving vertices getting the silhouette as close as I can. That's generally the, the goal with the base mesh. Um, this isn't like a full traditional retopo, but this is not an unusual way to do it either. As long as your meshes are close enough, um, you can do it this way. You don't have to do it totally from scratch. Put on the uh, shrink wrap modifier. I'm just going through, like I said, I give it a generous amount of geo and the the parts of the wood that protrude out i really want to exaggerate those um so i do go through late uh right here you can see i'm going through and i i extrude those faces out a little bit and then on the parts where it kind of like ramps back down into the wood i merge the vertices together and yeah here's the knife tool just getting those extra edges i need so i can extrude those faces and and yeah, this is definitely overkill. This is you wouldn't really do this if it was like a. I mean, you could actually get away with it for games for most game engines nowadays, unless it's like a hardcore mobile game that is super optimized. Um, most most devices now can handle a fair amount of geo. But anyways, yeah, I'm just welding the extra verts together where I want it to kind of mesh seamlessly back into the mesh and uh, at this point I've got the mesh UV'd uh, all the planks are retoppled and I just use the mirror modifier to duplicate the front back and top and bottom and here I am I'm just uh, kind of going through and making sure that the high poly and low poly parts are split up correctly and are named appropriately so that they can be recognized by the bake program. In this case, I'm going to use Marmoset tool bag. Um, but basically, you just want to make sure that they're corresponding with their names appropriately and that their meshes aren't intersecting with other meshes. Like you can see there, the meshes are far away enough from each other that when I bake it, they're won't cause any artifacting in the bakes, um, which is always frustrating. So it's just, it's a good idea uh, at this point, before you go ahead and export everything, it's generally a good idea to just uh, go through your groups, uh, double check, triple check. In this case, you can see I have the two collections, the plank low and planks high, and then I have three groups in each one. And I'm just double checking and triple checking that everything lines up. 
you know, making sure that the Planck's group three here lines up with Planck's group three low. And, you know, just, it, it, it's a little tedious, but it's worth it to avoid the frustration of wondering why your bake didn't work out. Uh, all it takes is one number or one letter out of place and it'll throw the baker off. And then I just grab the low poly group, export it as an FBX, all the parts in the planks low. And I do the same thing with all the parts in planks high, export it as an FBX. Um, I already have it done here. I've already exported them. I want to point out, uh, I'd like to make sure selected objects is checked because if you don't do that, Blender will export everything in your scene and it can take a long time depending what's in it or crash even. Um, but yeah, getting it ready to be baked in Marmoset Toolbag now. Um, this seems like a good spot to kind of cut it off. I don't want to make these videos any longer than they should be. Um, hopefully you guys are finding this uh, a little informative and hopefully a little entertaining. I know a lot of people look for full-blown tutorials. Um, and... I'm hoping to do something like that down the road, but right now I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give anybody the wrong information. I just want to get a little more comfortable with what I'm doing personally first. But uh, yeah, down the road, I'll, I'll probably be doing a more step-by-step -step style tutorial. And with that said, I hope you are all doing well. We'll uh, see you in the next video where we'll touch on the metal bands a little bit. And... Uh, get ready for baking. All right. Peace out and take care.